so good, I feel so numb. And now, from the cave of wonders and recorded live in the presence of gods, welcome to the Rain Man Show. All right, hello everybody, welcome to the uncensored broadcast of the Rain Man Show. A special show just for you hardcore elite listeners. We're going to have some fun today. We got some interesting topics to get into. It's funny because last show I didn't have a chance to get into it. However, one of our listeners, Ashley Campbell, tweeted out to us during the show, uh, can we take a moment to appreciate the ad that played before tonight's live Rain Man broadcast? And it was... The Jesus. What? The, the Jesus, Jesus like- Calling Podcast. Now, apparently she listens on the TuneIn app. And on the TuneIn app, you have ads like a pre-roll. And when you click play, her advertisement before our show was the Jesus Calling Podcast. <laughs> that makes total sense. It, I, yeah, definitely not the right demo. I don't know, man. I mean... Some could say they need Jesus after the show. I mean, after last week's show, hopefully we have that petition going where we want to move the 4th of July to December 25th. Fireworks and Jesus. It just makes sense. Maybe (laughs) that's why. Maybe that's why. But I want to pull up the uh, Jesus Calling podcast. I'm not prepared. Uh, Has anybody managed to pull it up and actually see what it sounds like? No, I've seen the image of it. And it's just like this Kenny Loggins looking dude. (laughs) <laughs> With a cowboy hat and a full-on Santa beard. So maybe it is about the fact that oh, we're trying to set up a he, petition. He's on Stitcher. Let me see what we got. There we go. Let me see what we got here. He's on iTunes as well. What are we... Look at this guy. Yeah. Making sure. <laughs> all the plugs. Also, JesusCalling.com. Go die. <laughs> it is JesusCalling.com. That's oh. fantastic. Oh, is it really? Yeah. <laughs> we just gave a bunch of marketing. Let's see how the show opens up. The word up. that I have been for every believer is your marriage may not be what you want it to be uh, this is it a sounds perfect... like a microsoft auto type type to text <laughs> yeah. it sounds like mr microsoft you're right and it may never be what you had hoped it to be but that doesn't mean that what you're doing in that marriage is a waste in fact you you this goes to show you anybody can have a show nowadays yeah I mean, bad about us <laughs> well, well let's wait let's get into well, because this. let's of... get into the meat and potato. maybe let's not judge him too fast the difficulties can do marriage even better than you would have done it had you been in a perfect marriage you can be this loving person because you're loving christ you can be this respectful person because you're reverencing christ so this is the show let me skip we're on 28 seconds in and i already even if i was a jesus loving man let's say i was a let's say i was a god-fearing man from the south okay let's just say i'd have killed myself already yeah yeah i would i would have turned to satanism (laughs) <laughs> when the Lord Jesus will say, "Wise, we're open to understand who Christ was, His death on the cross." I mean, the... let's go ahead and give this guy a judging around the board here. We'll start with Thomas, who has uh, uh, experience in the radio business. Mm-hmm. Um, let's start to, with you. Give us a, a fair rating on this show. Scale significance of... of that. Let's talk audio quality content, just real fast. And I personally invited him into my life and because I came to Christ through Billy Graham. A little bit of production. Where he went to say? college and found out that he went to a Christian. A little fast, but he could easily be on an AM station. Okay. With the the tier of a lot of that stuff. Maybe K R O P. Maybe K R O P. Maybe. Yeah. All right, Tony. Really quick uh, grading. In school uh. called Wheaton College in Chicago area. I didn't even know that there were Christian colleges. I didn't know there was a Jesus Calling podcast. It uh. It definitely reminds me of uh, my early podcasting with Dave. You know, like... Uh, no. The, the, no. The, 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 we remember what those sound like. <laughs> awful. <laughs> no, I, I'd say, you know, like... Uh, it, uh, it, to me, it sounded like he was in a tunnel. In a tunnel? Uh, your, your podcast used to sound like this. Ah, uh, yes. Now, yes, yes. <laughs> it's coming back now. It's coming back now. I would give Welcome them... Welcome, everybody, to Comic Book Chaos. No, no, no. Has the door radio. <laughs> Dave is in the co pilot seat. Hello. Uh, and also, with your fries, would you like a shake? <laughs> How do I know this isn't Kennedy? Hello, sir. Can I have your order, please? You want to know why, asshole? <laughs> <laughs> because Kennedy is this sound. <laughs> I am John F. Kennedy. There's a clear difference, you motherfuckers. <laughs> Uh, going back to my grade, sir, I give it a... Hold on, Tony. Uh, would you, uh, with your grade... This is FDR. 
<laughs> it is. It is a little FDR. It is. Oh, okay. Let me Would you like fries with that, please, sir? You should talk about your uh, polio. Yes. <laughs> the crackling. <laughs> I know, that that was Tony's podcast. I mean, <laughs> go ahead. Give, I, I, give it a, I give it a B. Okay. Andrew doesn't matter. Brian. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, and so would you like to hear a sample? No, um, please. Applied please, no. and was a please. Subject matter gets gets an automatic F. Listen, uh, Brian, <laughs> recording in a comic book shop. Yeah, we did a lot <laughs> we of did that. A lot of that. Sounds better than <laughs> Tony's pre comic book chaos. It's true. Yeah, yeah, no, I I I I, I agree. True. Well, I don't I know. Agree. I mean, I spent months recording in a kitchen. So <laughs> hey, Tony was employee of the year though. Yeah, he was. So, he, so that Tony worked his ass off. Yeah, so I'm, he could he could do all the shit recordings. Yeah, I, I don't get. It. I never gave a shit. No, no. I remember Tony. Tony was uh, Tony. Tony stole the title from me. Uh, I yes, remember. Yes, yes. Man, I, I need I to pull. I need to have Dustin, Dustin Lucas, if you're listening right now. You need to pull the show, the Men with No Lives, where we broadcast Tony's <laughs> first <laughs> recording of comic book. <laughs> what was it called? Comic book shuffle. Which oh one? gosh, I comic forgot. book. What the one that we did before? No, it was it was uh, something he was trying to do uh, something out like an offshoot of Comic Book Chaos. It was oh, going to no, be yeah, I know what you're talking a comic about Comic Book Shuffle or Comic Book something. It was called, God. and it we had to do a recording. Corner, wasn't it? Huh? Wasn't it Comic Book Corner or something like something that? Comic like Clutter? that? Com- there you go, Comic Book Clutter. Yeah. Oh, okay. It was Comic Clutter, and it was the greatest thing ever. I remember we were roll. Were you in that show, no, Brian? Yeah, I, 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 was, I we was were there. Yeah, you were dying, Tony. You you dying. could not stop laughing because it could, was when we played it on air. And David, David was there. David was dying. He's like, "How can you think that's good, Tony?" He's like <laughs> his his voice. Oh man, it was great. It was so good. Uh, you do a pretty good David impression. Yeah, I will give you that. No, <laughs> yeah. um, that podcast. I mean, he did have a little production quality with the very soothing sounds of tinkling in the background. And uh, yeah, it made me want to go to sleep. Well, no, that's the thing. Um, my girlfriend listens to a podcast. Uh, it's literally its purpose is it's a show about nothing so that you can fall asleep to this guy's voice. And that's, that's really what, that, what it's called. I can't think of what I, I don't know what the fuck is it's that. Called. What is it's it's it's, it's a C-span. Sh- what it's C-SPAN. <laughs> well, it's essentially. Yeah, it's like C-SPAN for podcasts. <laughs> and uh, but the whole purpose of the show is that you just fall asleep with it playing. Yeah. And uh, that's exactly what that sounded like, mm-hmm. only with like a D grade quality. Yeah. Yeah. Because seriously, us recording in a cavernous hall known as the comic book shop was better. Yep. Than that shit. Right no one there. ever knew. No, nobody. Everybody thought we were always in studio. Yeah. And we were literally at a comic book shop after hours. Speaking of bad audio quality, Andrew, <laughs> did you ever send me that audio quality that you were shoot that you wanted me to fix? Yeah, it was in the hip shot that you don't look at. Can I pull? Can I pull? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm gonna pull it up. Oh, oh. man, Andrew's and, spicy and, today. And, no, Andrew hates me for some reason, dude. He 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 told me that he hates my JFK. <laughs> even though it was the number one like talk about thing, but yeah, he hates it. Yeah, I know my I listeners, say, Andrew. First off, I didn't say I hated it. Listen, anything. if we I need advice like on gay it. relationships, we'll go to you. Okay? <laughs> All right, big bear. <laughs> Mike's not a bear. What the hell's wrong with you? Mike, how does he know more? Yeah, we last you show. You looked those up. Last show. Hold on. Last show. Yeah. Andrew started putting categorizing us into what the gay community was con- would consider us, and I'm oh, like, you're how, a power do you, bottom. how do you know this? You're like, a pow- that's, yeah, you're a power. But bottom. how do you know this? <laughs> Well, let's have Brian do it then, if he knows. Uh, she, no, I, I don't. I don't. <laughs> uh, oh, no. Oh, oh, what? <sighs> Wait for that car? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You see how good yeah. uh, this is the gay porno, and you see he how really did look some you, up. You see how good oh, Andrew's uh, oh, sound drop yeah. goes right oh, in with that. Oh. oh, oh, oh. <sighs> Oh, that's sweet. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh
Is this subtitled? Like, what was Can it? someone go check to see if Andrew's hard and then we'll know he's gay? <laughs> yeah, not it. Not no, it. No, not checking that. Tony, no, you're CC, closest. Weren't you, weren't you there for the show where Dan put porn? Like directly yeah, it was above Christy your head. Christy Mac, though. Yeah. That but, at least involved one woman. But it was woman. like directly above your head. So yeah. everyone was like staring that was my at first, you. That was my first men, <laughs> men with I, no I got some great sex that night. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when I knew Maggie was into chicks. I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> She's like, is everyone going to leave soon? I'm like, yeah. She's like, okay, good. And I'm like, <laughs> let's play some more Christy Mac, please. <laughs> but yeah, no, that was the first time you ever came yeah. on the show. And yep. he, yeah. He came on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Well, normally he comes after Crazy. in the car ride on the way here oh. from the movie. So, <sighs> Jesus. <laughs> uh, since we're on this topic, uh, Brazzers Ghostbuster porn parody, possibly <laughs> the greatest thing ever. I yes. gave it a ten out of ten. Uh, right. Have you watched it yet? I don't. Is it out yet? It's not out yet, it's is not it? Out yet. Yeah, it's. Uh, I've seen. I've seen a sample, but it's not out yet. I haven't seen any samples, although it has some hot chicks in it. And the reason why I'm even bringing it up, it just. My whole point of this topic is to kind of show the hypocrisy of people and the pervy secretiveness of so many people on social media. For the past, I did this article roughly 10 days ago, okay? I put an article out because I thought it was clever. I don't want to turn this into the men with no lives, cabs, or radio days where we put just, you know, a bunch of sluts on our website. Right. But I was like, this is relevant. It's geek culture. And it's also, if you read some of the, the little blurb that I put, it's, it kind of serves a point. And it is the number one hit on our site for almost 10 days straight. Really? And yet, if you look at our Facebook page and you look at my page where I posted, it has almost has zero shares and I think three or four likes. Hmm. So nobody can like it and share it, but they sure can click on it. <laughs> <laughs> it shows how many men, because you know it's men looking at it. Yeah. How many men are well, afraid hold, hold of their significant others n- f- trying to find out what they're looking at? How do you know it's not Maggie? Just continually <laughs> clicking. <laughs> <laughs> like, just not, if it's Christy Mack, maybe. Oh, okay. 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 So, I mean, do you guys do things like that? Are you guys afraid? Okay. Th- Thomas. No. Well, hold on. <laughs> hold on. Don't be so brave because your girlfriend did call last show or after the last show and want to know. Is she going to get mad that I'm talking about this? No, she's not okay. mad. Uh, she did call and wanted to say, and said, kind of called you out on your prostitution agreement saying that right. you would, you would spend a couple million dollars if you had it on Kira Knightley. Right. Okay. Does that mean you were afraid to look at pornography? No, not at all. Not at all. I look at it with her. Okay, but would you look at uh, would she get mad if you were looking at it on your own? No. Okay. She doesn't care and she's I, I, into Brian's it. raising his hand. I, I have a follow-up question. Okay. Do you look at the same pornography with her that you look at when you're by yourself? Absolutely not. That's personal. <laughs> Pretty close. <laughs> Pretty close? Yeah. So there's not like like one or two like weird fetish things you look at <laughs> when she's not around cuz you don't want to know about your like big toed women. Big toed women. I don't know, dude. I'm just throwing shit out there. I dated a girl. I dated a girl. <laughs> no, she didn't have a big toe. Got a hit. I, I dated a girl that years ago, she would tell me that her ex-boyfriend acted like he hated black people. Okay. And yet, when she went through his browser history, every single bit of porn he looked at was black porn. I mean, isn't that a like, whole? Wait, works, hold on. was though? it black on black or was it interracial? It was, it was, no, it was, it, it, was, uh, it was black, just booty porn. Just I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I didn't get into it. I didn't interview her. <laughs> I, just, well, no, I, mean, I think that I think that actually makes a difference. Do you think it's a little bit of like a control, like a little bit of a, what's it called? Um, domination. Like, I, oh, I'm going to. That's, why, that's why I'm asking if it was black on black or if yeah. it was white dudes and black chicks with big old bubble butts. <laughs> like there's a difference. Is that any different than a than a, a religious figure condemning gays and then coming out being a flaming homosexual, though? Kind of like Andrew being Mormon. Absolutely. And being gay now. <laughs> <laughs> I, wait, I see wait, your wait, point. Wait. Did you finally come out of the closet? Did no, not yet. Dude, he no, is. He is. I mean, his uh, girlfriend. Brian, did you hear the show where his girlfriend came on? No, I. Didn't. She pretty much said he's gay. No, she did say. She did say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she did. She did. <laughs> she definitely. <laughs> the greatest show she ever. He did. She said that when he's drunk, he admits it. Basically. <laughs> hey, what are you doing later, Andrew? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, yeah, let's move off this topic here. Let's move on to better things. Uh, Futurologist Dr. Ian Pearson on sex with robots, uh, contact lens and V, contact lens VR. Sorry, and more. Now, this guy again, another one of those scientists, Thomas, that you and I continue to talk about that do 
Like they don't get into college to research this. You know they don't. No. No. And yet they get stuck on these these researches. Yep. And this is one of them saying that by the year 2030, women and men will be having sex predominantly with robots. Yeah. Now, I've had this conversation time and time again. And you guys have always said back in the men with the live days, you guys have. I think I was the only one that admitted saying, yeah, I would have sex. I would try that. I'd try it out. Yeah, okay, you too, Brian. Yeah, I'd try I it. I would have no problem I'm with it. I'm not saying that we might predominant way to bone. It, yeah. But, it, I mean, I'd give it a shot once or twice. I mean, unless, of course, she's fucking fantastic. Or <laughs> or if it's the $100,000 version of Kiera Knightley, then... <laughs> but uh, isn't, that the, isn't that the end of humankind as we know it? When we already see a... Tr- what the... F- Andrew, quit sending me topics! <laughs> <laughs> it's relevant! <laughs> <laughs> There's a thing that already does this. Andrew is only on the show to destroy me. <laughs> That's it. He comes in to pretend he likes me. No, I like you. I, I like you, Mike. I like oh, you. Oh, wait, wait. He's Greg Jr. Yeah. He is. <laughs> Did I not just say that last show? Yes. Yes. No, this thing This thing already exists. It's, it's a sex suit that you plug it in. Andrew, and you bit. are not the bus driver I here. I know. I'm trying to be the navigator. <laughs> no, You're not the navigator. I know. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> You're supposed to be at the back of the bus. My hand. Grab my hand, Mike. You're getting too far into this vortex. Grab my I can't, hand. I said, Mike, you grab my hand. You want to pull some parts here, okay? No, Mike, get my back. Come back. I'm Mike, old. come back. Pull back here. There's no closets. Come back. Oh, no. Okay, continue. What did you send? What did you feel? First off, you told me to log into HipChat. Okay. The last it's show, like, yes. It's like, if I didn't know any better, I would think he's like the master strategist. <laughs> How to fuck me up in the middle of the show. He tells me before we start, you gotta log into HipChat. I'm trying to talk to you. So I log in and he starts sending me messages and he knows the only computer I have in front of me right now is the one connected to the system. And he doesn't just send one. And listen, listeners, you heard the beep. Brian, did you hear the beep? I heard the beep. Yeah, I okay. heard the beep. I and heard you, you know. Yep. The Andrew heard the beep, yep. but that didn't stop him from sending two more messages. <laughs> it's one of those like, well, I've already sent one beep. I'm committed at this point. <laughs> Bing. Go ahead, Andrew. There's. Right. Oh, I mean, I didn't. I, it's not like I go in every week to be like, oh, fuck Michael. That's not what's I happening. I think you do. It was it. <laughs> we were talking about sex suits and sex robots, and I sent you an article about a virtual reality sex fucking suit that already exists. Okay, okay. Man. go get into it then. <laughs> Is he gonna cry? I think so. Yes, he's gonna cry. Oh my god, get the closet door. Go go. <laughs> <laughs> There's a <laughs> Go ahead, Andrew. There's a virtual I should be rewarding him with that. <laughs> it's it's called Point uh, Evolution VR. Okay. And it uses a machine that was released um to give 3D uh haptic feedback to record movements. Hmm. That you plug a flashlight into and you can like stick tits on it and then you put the Oculus on top and then you got that's harness. Just, See, that's just weird. No, that's on. just too much effort. I've done the flashlight thing. Oh, you. It's not the same. Yeah. It's, Shocker. It's just not the same. But I mean, it's it's better than it than like giving yourself a hand job with your left hand, but not the same. With the stranger. The stranger's <laughs> where you sit on it, buddy. Oh. <laughs> Whichever. <laughs> it doesn't fucking matter. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Um. So. See, to me, Can we go back it's, to get, article? it's getting so <laughs> convoluted with this whole VR thing. Yeah. You're putting on gloves. I'm looking at pictures right You're now. You're plugging of, into the Matrix. Of, yeah. And I'm like, listen, I don't, I don't have time, and I wish I did, to make love to myself. I don't have time <laughs> to set the mood like the old days. This isn't when my mom would go to work during the summertime, oh, yeah. and I would have the entire day to myself, and my mom's all, be sure you clean the entire house. Yeah, sure, I'll get to that. And your brother's going to be playing basketball all day, and I would get this big old extra, like, you know, skip in my jump. I'm like, all right, this means I'm going to be alone <laughs> all day, and I'm going to clean the I can clean the house in 30 minutes. Right. Okay, this isn't about that. I wasn't setting the table. This is, I don't have time for this to set the table, set the mood anymore. Now, it's 
quick and dirty. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's what you can do. I have a kid. It's hiding in the bathroom with your door press or with your foot yeah. pressed against the door. You learn how to masturbate one footed. Like, yeah, it's it, like, hey, I need to take a quick shower smell right? tonight. Hey, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take a dump. Don't come in here, please. Don't come in here for the love of God. Five, don't open the door. For five goddamn minutes. Don't come in here anymore, dude. Give me two and a half. That's all I need. <laughs> don't say my name. That ruins everything. Well, Especially if you have a kid, which you right, know. That's what I'm saying. Like, says, that's but, the worst. I, I, I don't contend you. If no, my kid, you can't. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Dad? Dad, are you in there? Oh, God damn it. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm right here, babe. Right. What, do you, what do you need? Don't look at my don't look at my phone. And it's not. See, your kid's not like my kid, though, because my kid knows is like Andrew. Not, not meaning he's gay. <laughs> <laughs> at least I don't know yet. But like he like, he calls me out. So he'd be like, Daddy, quit being quit being lame in the bathroom. And even though he doesn't oh. know that, he doesn't know what I'm doing, I immediately feel guilty. I'm like, you're right. <laughs> you're right. I'm being lame in the bathroom. <laughs> Jesus. Quit oh. being lame in the he, bathroom. That's his favorite word right now. Lame and stupid. And he's oh, all, Daddy, great. quit being lame in the bathroom. I'm like, does he know? <laughs> Why do you not masturbate in your own bedroom? Because you have a kid. What? He has his own bedroom. It doesn't matter. What am I going to do? What excuse can I give my... Like, let's say Why I'm, are you sitting let, in the bedroom? I'm taking well, a nap. For, first off, I try... <laughs> <laughs> oh, this man. motherfucker right here. Are you Don't I'm taking me. a I'm nap? I'm taking a nap. I'm They're taking a nap. Have you ever a met nap. a child? What is? You were a child once, but you still are. What is wrong with you? <laughs> you can't take a nap if you have a child. Jesus. This is fucking hey, ridiculous. eight-year-old, don't fuck around in the house at all. I'm going to lay down and like, sleep I, I don't want to wake up to the smell of burning yeah the bathroom (laughs) is a legitimate excuse yeah and you can you can sometimes spend like 15 20 minutes in there before they even realize you've left the room (laughs) as as long as you know super friends doesn't fucking turn off or wonder your netflix cue to your masturbation schedule no it's just it's auto (laughs) re it's auto start the next episode and just go and you're fine lord i mean wait till you have kids thomas just wait, buddy. <laughs> yeah! Don't go nowhere. The Rain Man Show will be right back. You know what it is? Ah! Have you ever wanted something so bad that you do just about anything for it? Well, that's exactly how we feel about you. That's right. AdamandEve.com wants you so bad. We're giving you 10 free gifts with your first order. You heard me right. That's 10 free gifts to spice up your love life. First, you'll get a sexy surprise for her. Second, an adventurous toy for him. And third, a little something we know you'll both enjoy. Plus, you'll get six full-length adult movies on DVD. And number 10, free shipping on your entire order. That's 10 free gifts for you shy types who've never tried Adam and Eve before. Just go to adamandeve.com and select any one item. It could be an adventurous new toy, a sexy piece of lingerie, or anything you desire. Just enter offer code DEAL30 at checkout and you'll get all 10 free gifts, including free shipping. That's offer code DEAL30. That's D-E-A-L-30 at adamandeve.com. Welcome back. You're listening to The Rain Man Show on Rain Man Digital with your host, Michael Flores. All right, we're back. Rain Man Show and Arm Channel 001 in your Rain Man digital app. Also, iTunes and Stitcher. Leave us reviews. Let us know how much you love us. And if you're disgusted by this week's show, <laughs> it is uncensored. So please. Could you go should, either way. Yeah, you should know that. Plus, there's a warning. Yeah, go fuck yourself. You, oh. <laughs> Jeez. And you also, if you sent an email to me and your name is Daniel, <laughs> please just... Uh, plus, just don't don't even do it. But Brian doesn't know about that yet. No, no, I, I don't. I don't. All right. So let's see what we have here on the docket. We we do have a little bit of news to get into. But first, before we go back into the vortex, Thomas, yes. I think we all know that um, this could go either way. You have you have a bit of bad luck. Oh yeah. And I figured it'd be a nice way to uh, <laughs> honor you. I mean, yeah. I, you know, for many years, I felt like I was the one that had the dark cloud over me. And then I met you. Then you met me. And that all changed. And Thomas is the <laughs> the biggest magnet for just when he had when he has. Brian like, knows. Yeah. I when do. he has like. And not only the bad moods that you get into, if you had yeah. a bad mood, it's usually you attract everything. Right. If you're in a good mood, you don't attract much. No, but it the doesn't ba- really change. It just gets worse. Yeah. When you're in a bad mood, it's just like a, it's not a, not a vortex. 
But more of a yeah, yeah, we go good. Cyclone of failure. Yeah, (laughs) Jesus. I know all these things already. He has named it. It's my cyclone of failure. Exactly. (laughs) It's my best friend. Uh, we hang yes. out and we have uh, let's see let's see which one do i want to go to first <laughs> there's multiple. oh there's multiples this there's is a fantastic. couple different um let's see which one i don't know if i haven't i don't have them titled oops let me turn off metallica <laughs> i don't have them titled so give me a second here <sighs> see now i just oh, have yeah. this vision of you. okay all right this one was during this is the last one we did a interview with lisa berry uh, which is the reaper the new reaper the replacement for death which is a huge character in supernatural the TV show. We did an interview with her, which is by by the way, Thomas, lots of good feedback on yeah, that. I saw that. A lot of good pe- yeah. feedback. It blew up. Uh, which just is which just means that Lisa's gonna probably like us more because it's getting I'm her a lot so. of attention. However, this is 30 minutes into the interview. Okay. We are 30 minutes into yep. the interview, and we just found out something very important to this <laughs> interview, okay? And here it starts. You were playing Billy. The next time I see it, I'm just going to be like, she's so stoic right now, but in her head, she is fangirling yeah. so hard. Yeah. <laughs> a little glimmer in the a eye. A little glimmer in the <laughs> eye. Well, I'm going to see that next time. Now. And, and mind you, we're doing an interview, but we don't hear her yet. Okay. There's a reason. Yeah. Now, now the other thing. Thomas had this planned. <laughs> mm-hmm. This whole question here. Planned. Uh-huh. You could tell. There's a setup. Yeah, there was, oh, I mean, yeah. He was ready. I was ready for this. I would question. think is how intimidating it was to be on a show that you've watched for. If you listen to the interview, you did not hear this. It was cut and I made it sound good so that Thomas didn't sound like a schmuck on his own show. Right, right. But on this show. We don't care about that. We don't care. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but this is Thomas. A little glimmer in the a eye. A little glimmer in the <laughs> eye. Well, I'm going to see that next time now. Now, the other thing I would think is how intimidating it was to be on a show that you've watched for t- 10, 12 years at this point. You know, what, you had the fandom from before, you had the acting credentials and the professionalism, but was it intimidating to be actually on the set? Because you also have the fear in this show, like any actor would have, not wanting to be the new character that could screw things up or <laughs> be in an sh- a unfortunate episode or come across in an unfortunate season. Thomas is Thomas is talking a lot. How much of that played into your fears and excitement when you first s- stepped foot on the stage? I, I can kind of hear hear a little bit, Uh-oh. but I can't I can't hear what he's saying. Oh, oh clearly. really? Right. <laughs> yeah, that was a real. That was I a long to, question. I, and I was that. like, he is like, he's really giving me some information here that's detailed. We've all gotten quiet. I'm like really straining to hear. I apologize. Ah, that's very weird. Uh, give me one second, Lisa. I apologize. Hold on. Can, can you tell how much I care? But, no, <laughs> that's weird. very weird. So fuck him anyway. <laughs> <laughs> His question was stupid. So moving on. I just like that there was silence. And I, sh- I, I did think that was weird. Yeah. That she because usually she's like, uh-huh. Uh-huh. And she did it. So I was like, she's either not digging Thomas or she's no. not hearing him. Turns so out. I can, turns out. Hold on, I have it. Oh, you got uh, it. Okay. Fix his uh, mic. Can you give me uh, about 30 seconds? Yeah. Okay. Yep. That was legit. Like, a All right, re- she's muted. I, you, and this is Ryan. Ryan will take any chance to take pot shots at, uh, <laughs> yeah. at Thomas. Yeah. Or at anyone, yeah. for that matter. We, you guys can hear me, right? Yeah, I hear you fine. Should I keep talking or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I don't think she can hear any of you guys. That was the problem. All right, you guys she talk heard Ryan now. enough, though. Yeah, okay, are you, oh. are, you can hear now? Yes, see, I can. See, I, I didn't okay. have, I'm sorry, Ryan. You guys were connected to the recorder, but were not were connected to her call. So oh, she was. Sweet. So she was even listening to you from far. Did he? He sounded far away, didn't he? Uh, Ryan? He sounded way oh my God. off in the distance. <laughs> look at way look at, off in the distance. But like, I was, I was, I was using all of my listening skills. Oh, I apologize. Okay. I'm a noob over here. <laughs> I zoned in. I zoned in. She See, was zoned. She, she could hear me. She was zoned. She really is a talent. There we go. <laughs> and completely professional. Didn't say anything. I know. Look at girl, she, she, the acting ability is kicked right in. <laughs> no. And Thomas' face was sheer horror. Okay. Yep. Like he, he was like playing the part, like laughing, but he was pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa, I, I'm gonna. We really. Thomas is gonna struggle to try to. Ask I'm gonna that try question to recreate again. that question because it was really <laughs> okay. thought out. <laughs> so, I was saying the first thing I thought of is that you know now knowing how much of a fan you have been when I see you. So that's Thomas now having to re- yeah. redo. So you had to redo that whole question. <laughs> redo the whole question. Wow. Why did because you just? Because she heard on. Mike, and then it sounded Ryan sounded like somebody in the other room, like, "Hey, so what do you think?" About? And then I'm. <laughs> 
I mean, I'm embarrassed. Can't even what, hear me. What if we never knew? Like, like that whole, and then like, and we you, went the entire interview, and she did hear it, him barely. Right, right. right. And she yeah. leaves the show thinking we're a what fucking a bunch of amateurs. Yeah, an amateur podcast. Right. Well, I mean, she's probably thinking that anyway. It took you 30 minutes to figure <laughs> it out. So. Luckily, luckily, Thomas didn't say a whole lot during the first 20, 30 minutes. You did say a few, a little bit, which when I was li- things, yeah. when I was listening to it, I'm like, well, uh, that just. I guess it didn't yep. matter. Nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> the theme because he did life. say stuff, and, so, it did, and it didn't. No one nope. knew. <laughs> so, Thomas, what's it feel like to now know what Andrew feels like? So stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't break. I'm trying to leave him out of this bit. <laughs> 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 I've got to bring him back in. All right, here's oh, the God. next bit of bad luck <laughs> on his own show. <laughs> okay, here we go. This is if yeah, again God, I hate because I, I love I love Thomas and like uh, the poor uh, guy like I've never known like his bad luck and the way he takes it is the best part about it mm-hmm. is that he takes it to heart he takes it as like uh, you know that guy from the, every failure remember the Dan Br- yeah the Dan Brown book yeah. where that dude like flips himself. himself yeah that's Thomas yep. you could see it in his eyes that when as soon as he goes home that's what he's gonna do because he failed yep he's just gonna sit there with the fucking cat of nine tails yeah. whipping mm-hmm. the shit out of his back and that's what makes it that much funny here's the next <laughs> the next bit of bad luck on his own show <laughs> Season ending cliffhanger at and this did not make it on the show, but of course the douchebag I am did yeah, put it at saved the, it, saved it. did put and it and bookmark. Did, yeah, I saved it for this show and I did put it at the very end of the show. So if you kept listening, you would have heard it on the supernatural show. <laughs> the episode's conclusion, Amara thanked Dean by giving him what he had always wanted, his mother Mary. This is Thomas struggling to read an article. Uh that he lost as a child. Uh let's see. Hold on just a second. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> No, the the parentheses. Are, by the way, if you had hoped, fucked with my quote. What are you, why it's Thomas? No, is that new. I know, right? What's going on over there? Paddle, <laughs> stop laughing. Teleprompter's <laughs> <laughs> fucked up. I don't know where to go. <laughs> you got to admit that was poor, to do with my hands. You got to admit that was poorly written to put Sam in a quote by Sam. <laughs> There's no words on it. Jesus! I love Thomas. Oh, dude. Yeah. 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 This is why we need to do video. This is right now. I cannot wait for this day to end. Oh, <laughs> Tom, I think why it's so good is because Thomas, like. <sighs> Thomas takes it so like <laughs> serious, like he takes it to heart. Oh, like, yeah, like he's up. gonna go home and like cut himself. Like <laughs> yeah. fuck, fuck, I fucked up. God damn it! All well, right, okay, I'll cut all this. Go ahead and uh, just save whatever. it for me though, because I want to laugh later. <laughs> oh my god, it man. is funny. I do admit he's gonna cut himself. <laughs> that was all while the guest was on the line. No, no, no that this was no, another. Was this our was, own. Oh, okay. Yeah. Another, god, if that was while the guest was on the line, I would have ended the show. <laughs> 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 the final episode of Crossroads ends with a gunshot. Right? <laughs> Thomas just fucking eats a bullet mid fucking show. <laughs> there you guys were forty two minutes. Boom! <laughs> and you just hear. <laughs> and I think what makes it worse is Ryan's laughing. Right? Like, just <laughs> the hyena cackle. <laughs> <laughs> it's a husky cackle thank oh, you i'm bringing um, it back oh my god dude oh <laughs> that was di- i hope the listeners on rayman show think it's funny because dude i was, di- I was dying when listening to this <laughs> He's oh, Jesus. i need to i need to do more of this <laughs> <laughs> all right so the uh, the Marvel comics. Now this is something that Tony posted early in the morning. Saw it, and I had to do my own very cynical, uh, very Rain Man E. Yeah, blurb, and then I posted the news on our website. Marvel had a fantastic idea recently, uh, where they decided to make Iron Man a woman. No, not a woman, a girl, and not just a girl, but a black girl. And not that there's anything wrong with that. Of course, I don't think I need to say that on this show. However, to me, it reeks of desperation of trying to get a pat on the back for being progressive. And you guys are the comic book guys in here. And uh, in fact, in college, this is, this is nothing new. 
in college, I studied, I took an entire full course on, on the history of comic books and Marvel. Uh, what were they called before they were Marvel? Uh, oh, timely, I, timely comics. And then uh, what was the name of DC as well? There was another name of DC as well. Ooh. I forgot. However, yeah. we studied them. And Marvel was the biggest culprit of this in the 60s and 70s. They did that. This is nothing new for them. They've always tried to go with the times. To me, there's a thin line between going with the times and trying to be overly progressive to get that pat in the back and make those headlines. Now, the college courses I took that had to deal with this, taught by progressive professors, okay? We all know colleges are li- very liberal. Right. The headlines and what we were taught was how not to be this way. Uh, and they basically took us through an entire study of how Marvel, by trying to be progressive, was actually more racist than racist individuals. Because they were, and this is, again, these are college courses taught in the universities that I took. Okay? Mm. And they gave you examples. Um, the example of uh, Luke Cage. He was directly created for the, I believe, I want to say the sixties, during the sixties, during the whole, the civil the whole, rights movement. The civil rights movement. Mm-hmm. But when they created him, they made him a walking, talking stereotype of a black man. Well, that's what all the black exploitation films were too. Right. I so it was all entertainment. It, bl- black exploitation is, uh, is something different because it's exploitation. It's, 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 it's there to exploit. That's the whole purpose to make a quick buck. And yes, Arguably, comic books did follow suit. However, this is many of the writers trying to be progressive, trying to do the right thing. And what they're doing is being in kind of offensive and kind of saying, here you go, little black person. You deserve a title as well. You're 15 and you're black. Here's your own little story. And that's the problem with Marvel. Study and history has shown the fact that colleges teach this and that this is something it's, mm-hmm. and it's taught as a negative. And yet Marvel in 2016 is still doing the exact same thing they did in the 60s. Yep. Do I have a problem with making a black superhero female? Absolutely not. Why would I? Do I have a problem with them taking a white Tony Stark who is privileged and taking his power away and giving it to a 15 year old black girl? Absolutely. Because of the message. The message is telling the up and coming white people that they that they suck. You're wrong. That you're a white male. Exactly. And that's that's the problem that I have with it. And that's the message that Marvel is giving. They're giving the message. And to me, Brian, I know you're very you're probably the most liberal person in here right now. Probably. Uh even more so than Andrew in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um and right now the entire social message is white people are bad. Yep. White people are rapists. We don't deserve our money or our houses or anything. Yeah. Regardless of how you got it, whether it was inheritance or hard work or you don't have one. And that's not the message I want my kid growing up with. Yeah. But that's the message that many of these comic books now and movies are going with. Yeah. And it sucks because if you want to make a message, if you want to make a, 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 a specific movie or comic book, you made a post actually, which you never comment. I never comment, but on the pissed face, me off. I knew when you commented on the Rain Man Facebook page about <laughs> this, I was like, okay, he's best. <laughs> because it's the message of erasing a white hero yeah, and putting it and replacing him with a 15-year-old black girl. That's a message. Mm-hmm. That's a deeply rooted message from the writer and Marvel. Yeah, that's not saying, hey, guys, we're going to make a new character. Exactly. That's going to be on her own. She's going to be like uh, a zany new like her name is. uh, Doesn't matter. Whatever her name is. It's not making your own character. It's not being original. It's you replacing a white male. You took you replaced it for it's it's greedy and it's shallow. And it's and it's like you said, this your own study said it is entirely racist. It's not. You let's are come a up. White male. It's not. Let's have enough faith in a new and interesting young black female character that we would put enough fucking effort and time into to believe in to want to tell this story. No, it's let's put her in at, who will never outshine the shadow of Tony Stark, no matter what she does. Yeah, she will always be in that shadow. First of all, still called the comic book Iron Man, which is a little 
stupid, frankly, at that point. No labels. And again, no you're labels, not, you're not working. You were doing this for cookie points and, and kudos because you didn't have the balls to say, I stand by this original character who I think has an important place in Marvel's universe. No, you went with, how can we get enough people to like us for what we did? Let's ax a main character and put in someone else and let their glory shine upon them. Which, in a way, says that you don't have enough faith or that this black girl couldn't do it on her own. Her character was not interesting enough. She had to be tied to Iron Man. Well, how else do you replace Robert Downey Jr. in the movies? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's really what this is all... It could be. I mean, this, no, what it really is is that, I, you know, I think to a, to a certain extent, they've run out of stories. Absolutely. Um, writing in comic books especially has gotten incredibly lazy. Uh, they keep yeah. rebooting... All of everything. DC well, D- this is a Marvel reboot. I know, again. but DC's rebooted And they just too. rebooted. DC's rebooting again. It's just another fucking reboot. Comic books as a medium, honestly, I think that the, the major comic books are, it's a dead medium. It's a dead art. It's, don't get me wrong, I think that the, 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 pencilers and the inkers they do fan and the colorists they do fantastic work because it keeps getting better and better and better as the years go on for the most part um with new technologies and everything else but when you look at the but writing that's the only thing progressing right progressing, the writing the stories the stories are, are all dead. the same they're just returned yeah. and you you plug this character here you plug that character there and even with all of the fantastic villains that the flash has in the rogues gallery it's still just the same fucking story over and over mm-hmm. again and honestly if you want a good african-american female character that is a kid, read Molly Danger by Jamal Eagle. It's one of the best comic books I've ever read in my life. And how many people know about that? No one. The exactly. guy used to, he used to he used to draw the Supergirl run that the TV show was based on um, when she's in high school. Uh, him and Sterling Gates was the writer, and Jamal was the the penciler for that. And that was when Supergirl stopped being so um, like sexualized, and they brought it back to her, like trying to find her way on Earth mm-hmm. as an adolescent. Going through, like, having to pretend that she knows what she's doing as a human. And it was fantastic work. And then Jamal left DC and he made Molly Danger as a character, which is a fantastic character. So if you want that blueprint for how to make a character and make an original character and have it mean something, yeah. this is an African American writer and artist making his own book. But the problem is, is that DC and Marvel wouldn't pick it up because they're too busy turning Iron Man. Into iron fifteen year old black yeah, girl because they don't care about the the they don't care about black artists they or the medium. So it's not about the black artists. Marvel doesn't care about them. They they care about their pat on the back. They're gonna get and they care about the uh, they care about they for some reason they have this hatred as well. They they fall in suit to the white guilt syndrome that many people in America are feeling right now, and they're feeding it because. The, but don't think for a second there isn't a message there that they re- again g- getting back to it that yeah. they replaced a white not a they rich didn't, white male they didn't they didn't replace Captain America no they replaced a rich elitist mm-hmm. there's a message there yeah there is there thought is. there is thought there there could have been any other hero yeah or here's something your only black superhero of any relevant note lately black panther could have had a new and interesting story yeah yeah <gasps> black panther's awesome too black panther's fucking kick ass dude if you've read his stuff he is fucking awesome and, the and new, he never gets anything and the new version of luke cage is awesome yeah after the success of the show and success of civil war you'd think you'd bank on those and introduce a new character in that no no, there's a direct message with doing Absolutely. Tony Stark as a substitute. That's the problem. This is the message. You didn't have faith. You wanted, like you said, points. Yeah. And I, listen, I don't have a problem with with pro women either. I mean, I, I I'm in love with the author that. In fact, I just reviewed it on Weird West Radio. Uh, pretty deadly. There's two feminists that run that that run that comic book series. It's uh, and they're hardcore feminists. Kelly, they should be mad too because this again isn't. Anybody believing that women can do something on their own in their, their own, own character, they needed Iron Man yeah. to promote this. which, which is insulting, and that's insulting. Yeah, yeah, that's the whole thing that nobody seems to care about. Yeah, I want to get Tony's thought on it because he's the comic book guy, but he had to take off. Um, but uh, I don't know. I mean, I mean, Brian, you're a comic book guy. I mean, you kind of said your two cents, but I mean, you have a daughter. Yes. I have a, I have a niece and it's very different than an actual daughter. But I mean, do you want and we're getting very serious here, but do you 
and you are, especially of late, you've become very liberal. I don't know if you're dating a woman who's a liberal. <laughs> I, I don't know what it is, but you have changed a lot. I don't know if you're growing. Maybe your daughter has grown up and maybe you've changed some your line of thinking, which I think if that's the case, then that's very fucking adult of you. That's probably that's probably more of it than anything, Mike, is is the the A just seeing where essentially the Republican Party stands right now when it comes to women and so many other things that that actually now matter to me. Yeah. Because I mean let's let's be honest here, as a privileged white man uh <laughs> give, you're, you're very privileged yeah i didn't i didn't give two shits <laughs> about abortion and women and yeah. women's rights and all of that and and now you know i've got a 10 year old who at some point puberty's gonna, be, gonna happen yeah. and those things are gonna fucking matter and the fact of the matter is is that with all the defunding and everything else that's going on it's it's ludicrous it's fucking asinine and it pisses me off yeah so i've probably yeah become more liberal based on the fatherhood thing and actually paying attention to what's going on yeah i think that's more than anything and and so yeah i guess i have done some growing up um being in healthcare, you care more about insurance and all of that kind of stuff um but when it comes to the comic book thing because let's talk about kids stuff um well okay hold on a second wait but i want to get back into your daughter for a second oh, okay. you like um now okay do you find it do you want your daughter to grow up in a world where they're Doing it because it's the right thing to do or because it's sincere and they deserve it and they earned it because being a woman is no different than being a fucking male. And yet, for some reason, the very progressive left has has made it almost a handicap to be a woman. Well, Not I mean, the right side. It's more or less the left. They, it's like you. they need the help. They need this 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 one up. And the way I look at it, does it seem like it's. A little one-sided like it's almost a handicap or does it or do you like this new shift for your daughter to grow up in i mean honestly man that's a tough one like do i want her making 22 cents less an hour than a guy doing the same job as her i dispute that no and i do too yeah, you know my thoughts that's a on bull that crap stat but i'm if we're going to talk about the far left that is one of those st the statistics that they love to yeah to bring up that 78 cents or whatever they are 79 or whatever <clears throat> fuck it is i don't fucking care um, <laughs> See, he's not completely. I don't know because I don't buy it. Yeah, I don't yeah. buy it for a second because if you're working for minimum wage, you're working for minimum wage. And if you're good at your fucking job, you're not making the same as anyone else doing the There's job. There's universities and accredited studies that show that that is absolutely not true. It's all based on the fact that more women are in lower paying jobs due to the jobs they choose to be in. Well, and, and not just that, but then they also take breaks. If you leave for three years to raise a child. Mm -hmm. You haven't been in the field the for three years. Yeah. And the same thing goes with men. If you decide to be a stay-at-home dad for three years, you're going to come back making less. Yeah. Mike, you've been a stay-at-home dad for 35. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, when it, when it talks about like the, the, the world that I want my daughter to live in is the same world, and this is going to sound so cliche, but it's the same world that Martin Luther, Ju Martin Luther King Jr. imagined for his children. Yeah. Where everyone's equal and there isn't this white guilt yeah. and there isn't this male I agree. guilt and mm -hmm. there isn't th those things shouldn't exist. I Everyone agree. should be on an equal playing field. See, so we're still on the same. We are still on yeah. the same page. Yeah. I think that I think that you can go too far in the other direction, which is what the far left has done. Yeah. It's the same thing they did during civil rights movement. They went too far in the other direction and you had, you know, you had to hit quotas for the number of minorities that were in certain colleges and the number of women that are in certain colleges. Here's the thing. Would I rather have, a, a, let's say, an Asian doctor that made it because they had to hit a quota or the white guy that finished 15 places ahead of him, but they had too many white people in the college? Which guy do I want to operate yeah, on me? Exactly. I'd rather have the, I would rather have had the 15 the, the Asian places guy, ahead. Of course. No, the Asian guy. Of well, course. yeah, they have smaller <laughs> fingers, so they're more Listen, gentle. It's fair. Um, like, it doesn't matter if your life is in his yeah. hands. It's fair. It's only, it doesn't matter if your life, the definition it of doesn't fair. matter if his, if your life, if you putting his life, your life in his hands. Right. But you know what? It's his time. Yeah. It's his see, that's, time. That's absolutely. And you shit. have to put your life in his hands but because see, it's only, shit. it's fair. But it's, it's only not. fair. It's not fair. Exactly. It's not fair that I have to have subpar care because he's Asian. And that's why he got into school. That's absolute shit. But the same thing goes with this women's rights movement and this this almost militant kind of take with the whole women's rights thing. Yeah. So anyways, we got way too serious. <laughs> Are we ready for the news yet, Andrew? Are you over there jerking it? Waiting on you. All right. You know what? For Let's things. get into this. Here we go. And... <laughs> And now it's time for news 
with Andrew. Why? You keep those headphones on, you You have earned this. You don't tell me what to do. You're not the bus driver. But let's start he's like, I like how he takes his headphones off like he doesn't want to hear it. Oh, God. He, he's I like, don't want he's, like, he's yeah. afraid that he's going to get a boner no, and yeah. we're all going to yeah, see yeah, it. Yeah. Exactly. Well, he's, like, he's like he's <sighs> like Gyllenhaal, uh, Gyllenhaal in uh, <sighs> Brokeback Mountain. He doesn't want to you know, accept it yet. Why he's saying he's not gay, he's taking it from Heath Ledger. Right. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Let's keep things sexy at least. With the sex see? festival <laughs> being forced yeah, to shut good. down yeah, early yeah, because too many people arrived... To try out the virtual reality porn. Here we are again. Maybe yep. maybe people are going to bang only robots, Mike. Yeah. There's a line. Well, if your choice is a robot or Andrew, the robot wins. <laughs> Every time. Definitely. Well, it yeah. could look like fucking Gore Vidal. Okay. And I would still <laughs> pick it over Andrew. Okay, hold on one second. Now, Andrew. Go on. <laughs> if. Yes. You know, read the topic and then I'll get it ready. I, I got to set the table correctly. Go ahead. A Japanese sex festival was over prematurely as herds of <laughs> as herds of virtual porn fans caused overcrowding fears. Streams of locals were looking to get their hands on the latest innovations from the adult entertainment industry in the first festival of its kind. Hmm. The adult VR Fest 01 in Akihabara region of Tokyo. Where? Akihabara. Hmm. Um, but fans of... Virtu- Sounds made up. <laughs> it's like a, it's a huge pop culture mecca. Um, anyway, but fans of virtual reality porn, which reenact sex and other acts using a blend of simulation headsets, male friendly sex toys, and other gadgets. What, were, what are male friendly sex gadgets or sex uh, toys? Well, like More flesh flesh lights. Lights. Okay. Prostate yeah. warmers. Things that don't hurt your balls. I mean, that's what I hear when I hear male friendly. Not vibrating cock rings. I mean, if you want your balls hurt, we that can happen too. So. Are you into that? <laughs> Anal no, vibrators. No <laughs> go, go ahead. Andrew, Anal continue. beads. <laughs> you want me to keep going? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> continue, Andrew. The fans were left disappointed as the event was shut down due to unprecedented popularity. Jesus. Among the attractions was a machine that simulated a woman on top of a man as he lay on the floor and another where punters put their hand into a cardboard box which blew air in a way that allowed people to fondle what felt like a breast. What? <laughs> I don't know. The this, Japanese people are this world odd. so this world. sexually repressed. This, this is, is true. Yeah, this, and, yet, and yet they're not. They have panties that come out of vending machines. And I would be spending my whole paycheck on that vending machine. <laughs> they have dirty panties. That and come if it out didn't give me my money's worth, I would shake it like that you do when you don't get your soda <laughs> or a baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Andrew, I have a question. Okay, okay. now. Let's say we were in the Star Trek, you know, era, and we had the, um, what's it called? The holodeck. Okay. Okay. Now, if nobody knew, and on the holodeck, you could do anything. You'd be like, computer, start gay program, Andrew 1. And it starts it. Most men would probably choose to, like, Kira Knightley, uh, computer, Bring up Thomas Cowley program one. <laughs> Kira Knightley initiated. Okay. What would you do? Would you have sex with a man in the holodeck if you knew it wasn't really a man, but it was a hologram? I think that'd make it more weird. Really? Yeah. But no, I'm not talking like a fake p- robot. I'm talking the hologram's legit. Right. But you know that the hologram isn't actually there. It's not judging you. How many? How many? How much time do I have in this holodeck? <laughs> First off, Nobody is it just a one and done thing, no, or pretend can we're I come not here? Back, or? Let me turn off Thomas's mic. What? Oh, come on, <laughs> son of a bitch! There you go. It's just you and I now. It's just you and I. Are there repeated visits? It's just you and I. <laughs> I'll make it even easier for you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm uh, Tony. I'm Tony Sabal right now. Convert Chaos. <laughs> 2008. Would you have sex with a man in the holodeck? I'll start you off. I mean, I'm not going to say no. Hi, I am Hologram <laughs> One. I'm here to satisfy your every desire, Andrew. What would you like me to do? Would you like me to shake it fast? <laughs> but watch myself. Can we helicopter dick? Is that it? 
Is that an option? I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> I can't have gay sex right now. Man. To, hold on. Hold on. Do you want me to take over, Mike? Yes, go ahead. <laughs> you, you, okay. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Hello, Andrew. Oh, no. Hello, I'm Program 1. This. this is going to be sound bites for days, I swear. But Andrew's loving it though. <laughs> Look at his face. He immediately responded, which proves that he would rather have a person. Would I don't know. He, I don't think that he was I, exactly Will Ferrell from Anchorman when he didn't want to play the Yaz flute. Yeah. When he pulled well, out the Yaz flute. Possibly. Oh, hey. How's it going? <laughs> All right. What else do we have in the news? Continue. Uh, next article. That's what continue means. Cool. All right. <laughs> California County finds its first case of Zika. Mm hmm. Uh, U.S. Uh, the first case of Zika virus um, in Riverside County has been confirmed in a 50-year-old man who recently traveled to the Caribbean. Ugh. Riverside County public health officials said Tuesday, the man from the southwest Riverside County likely became infected while in the Dominican Republic, a country dealing with Zika-infested mosquitoes. God damn it. There have been... There have so far been no cases of a person acquiring the virus from a mosquito bite in the continental United States. Nope, it just was announced. California. Yep. Yeah. Yep, just announced today. Yep, the county said the man is expected to make a full recovery. And while R Riverside County is one of the last counties in Southern California to have a confirmed case. See, now that's a comic book Marvel agenda they should tackle. The Zika virus. Or, you know, one of the hosts of other problems we actually have. Yeah, let, let's do a comic book series on the Zika man. <laughs> that sounds, that's a seller. That's a top seller. Yeah. That's definitely something you're going to want to put on your pull list, Thomas. <laughs> the Zika man. Can I put Andrew on my pull list? Hey. <laughs> Fucking pride <laughs> wants to bring it back to the gay thing so bad. I know, right? <laughs> I was really looking forward to having some gay sex with Andrew on air. <laughs> Let me pull out my flute. <laughs> oh, <laughs> All right. Continue with the article. <laughs> Not the gay sex. Um, Riverside County, they always knew that a case of Zika would happen eventually. Public health officer Cameron Kaiser said in a statement, we will continue working with our partners in healthcare and vector control to protect our residents, especially pregnant women and the unborn who are most at risk. You know, you're pretty much screwed. If you're pregnant, and you have Zika, yeah. you're screwed. You're, you're going to have a pinhead child. Pretty much. They're saying there's like almost there's almost zero probability that your child will come out normal. I would just not go outside. Wait, these are California children? And no, any, any person who contracts Zika while they're pregnant, not only that, it has now become an STD. So if you're a man and you were bit by a mosquito that has Zika, you can now sexually transmit it to a woman and she, they, they now, I was reading an article about this. They now suggest that you do not try to have a child for at least eight to nine months once Zika is out of your system because it will affect your child. It's not if, it yeah. will. What is the lifespan of Zika in the body? I don't know. If, they, if they're suggesting women eight to nine months to get rid of it, I mean, before they have a child, then it's got to be at least, what, six months? Something like that. Something like that. So, a while. This is scary, man. This is the apocalypse. All this time, we thought it was going to be zombies. It's pinhead kids. <laughs> At this point, it's I, pinheads. Jesus. At this point, I, I wish it were zombies. That's the new evolution, evolutionary track we're going down. This is going to turn into a children of man sort of a scenario. Yeah. We just stop having children altogether. Yeah. 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 Well, you know what? If we Everyone all just go sterile, you know what would solve that problem? What? Robots. Gay sex. <laughs> <laughs> no, if, robot sex. If we had. Oh, no. Brian, <laughs> gay sex would end the problem. Gay robots because you can't have you can't have children through gay sex. So either gay sex or anal sex, right? Hey, ladies. Well, you can still hey, that's, have that's you, that's God's loophole. Yeah, anal sex is God's loophole. You yeah. can still have a child through anal sex. So this whole time, the way to save us is through being sinful, gay and, and anal. Amen. <laughs> All right, we got to end the show today. Everybody, thank you for listening and and bearing with a this show. Thank you. See you next week. Bye. <laughs> Thank you for listening to The Rain Man Show with your host, Michael Flores, with hosts Tony Sabal and Thomas Cowley, Andrew Spindler with the news, audio guru Dustin Lucas, produced by Michael Flores and Dustin Lucas. The Rain Man Show is a Casador Productions and Rain Man Digital broadcast production. For all things Rain Man, go to rainmanshow.com.